Welcome to Fawn with Drilling Engineering. We use a special drilling fluid to remove the cuttings out of the borehole. This drilling mod picks up the cuttings at the drill bit, carries them up the annulus between the drill pipe and the borehole wall to the surface. There, the cuttings are separated from the mod so that the clean drilling mod can be pumped back through the drill string to the bottom of the borehole for the next cycle. Well, today we want to talk about how the drill cuttings are separated from the mod. The big particles are simply removed from the mod by using sieves, as you can see. We all know sieves, so we don't need to talk so much about them. But there are also very many fine particles for which the sieves cannot work, because the fine particles will simply pass through the sieves and stay in the mod. So today we want to look at how we can remove these fine particles from the mod. Alright, the sieve will not work, but there's a physical effect that we can use to get the fine particles out of the mud. And this is what we call the centrifugal force. We all know that if you drive too fast with a car around a tight curve, then you will skid off the road. This exactly is the effect we use in the so-called hydrocyclone. I will explain it further in detail in a moment. In a cyclone, we move the drilling mold in very narrow curves at a very high speed. The centrifugal forces act on the particles in the mold. The particles are sort of thrown out of the fluid so that they are smashed against the side of the cyclone. I have prepared a small cyclone model here, which can use to explain how it works. We have an inlet here. The mold goes into the cyclone. Because the inlet is placed tangentially at the side of the cyclone, the mud flow develops a quick rotating primary vortex. Well, the mud flow follows this part down the cyclone, but in the lower part it gets narrower, and the mud will probably think, oh god, oh god, what do I do now? But then it sees an outlet leading to the top, so the mud forms a secondary vortex in the center of the device. The secondary vortex spins even much faster than the first vortex. The fluid moves up the outlet at the top, while the particles are thrown out of the vortex and slide down at the outer wall of the cyclone. If you look closely at the bottom of the cone, there is another opening which serves as the outlet for the curtains. You can see here in the picture how it really looks. You can clearly see the inlet and the upper and the lower outlet. You can also clearly see the outer primary vortex and the inner secondary vortex. We have built here a pretty simple model of a cyclone using an old drinking bottle. You can see if you look closely, the lighter blue plastic particles in the flow are following the flow, which is exiting at the top end of the bottle, while the heavier red particles leave the cyclone in the underflow. Of course, in our institute, we have a real hydrocyclone. You can see that in the video. In this video, you can see what happens when we switch on the water supply. The water begins to swell so quickly that in the middle of the cyclone, a little air vortex builds up. This is a good indication of a high centrifugal forces at play. Obviously, even the water cannot stay in the center of the vortex. We cannot demonstrate the function of this cyclone using the red and the blue plastic pieces. This cyclone was designed for much smaller particles. So we use this limestone powder for experiment here. You can see how we suspend the limestone powder in the water for this experiment. In the video, you can clearly see what happens when the limestone goes into the hydrocyclone. Unfortunately, you can no longer see the vortex because the liquid has, has become opaque. But if you look carefully at what comes out from the upper and the lower outlets, you will see that the lower outlet output delivers a thick type paste fluid containing, containing high concentrated solids, while the output from the upper outlet is a clear liquid suspension, practically like water. So when we collect the samples from the outputs, we can clearly see that there are many of these small particles in the underflow than in the head flow, as you can see. Well, we explain all this in details how mud separation system on the well site works in our lecture, Basics of Drilling Engineering. We'll be delighted if you come to our lecture here in Freiburg. We look forward to seeing you. Glukov.